looking at wrapped soft slab ceramic vessels today. You guys already know ceramics is the art of producing objects from clay. A slab is a flattened piece of clay. And your new word, vessel, is a hollow container, especially one used to hold liquids such as a bowl. Slab construction, like we said, a slab is a flattened piece of clay. Um, we can do several different types of slab construction. Leather hard slabs, where you let the clay get hard so it stays in its shape and does not bend. That's good for boxes and stuff. Soft slabs are when you want something curved. And you can also drape a slab over an armature or mold and it will dry and maintain that shape. Right, we're going to look at tools and equipment, a little vocabulary review. Uh, some ideas and inspirations, your sketchbook assignment, and the rubric. In white are resources, videos, and instructions. Today's lesson instructions are from AMCO, Brent. And then there's some ideas for advanced projects and some reminders and review the vocabulary. So tools and equipment. Reminder of our main tools, your modeling tool, which is right here, the modeling tool with the loop for subtracting, the fettle knife, and the lacing tool. Um, we use the needle and the blade for two separate purposes. In class, we work on canvas, which we place on the table like a mat. At home, you can use newspaper. Okay, cutting tools. The fettle knife and the lacing tool are both for cutting. Uh, the fettle knife cuts large chunks. We do not use it on the project itself. The lacing needle is used for cutting um, your project specifically. When we place the template on top of the clay, we're going to trace it with that needle. Do not draw on the clay with the needle. It's too fine and the lines will be invisible when we go to paint it or glaze it. Modeling means pushing, smushing, or blending the clay. Use modeling tools instead of your fingers. They just apply a little bit more pressure, more steady. I usually dunk them in water before I use them. This loop is used for subtracting or cutting away on clay. Your typical household tools we have there. Make sure to slip and score where you add two pieces. So you're going to use the comb and the scrubby or the toothbrush for um, slipping and scoring, the water that you put on the toothbrush or the scrubby, either one, um, will create slip on the surface of your clay. Okay. All right, the equipment we're going to use, you guys are already familiar with your heat guns. You've seen the slab rollers in the room. Um, we're not going to use those. My advanced students use those, but it's just like a big rolling pin just like over here. We do not let the clay touch the roller. You always put it between two layers of canvas. Uh, that way it won't stick. In the kiln is your clay oven. The proper term is to fire the kiln. That just means you've heated it to a specific temperature to make the clay vitreous, hard, and permanent. And the other word you want to make sure you know is fuse. Kilns fuse glaze to the clay body. Review. Uh, we have greenware, that's the clay project you've made before firing. Bisqueware, once it's been fired, it's hard and permanent like stone or glass and will last for thousands of years. And glazeware is a ceramic project that has a fused coat of glazed added to it. Again, fused, attached by heat. Glaze makes it non-porous, which means it can hold the liquid. Here's your states of clay, the glue Potter's glue is slip and slurry. Workable clay is plastic clay, fresh out of the bag, and leather hard where it's still bendable. And your finished product, when it becomes chocolate hard like a candy bar and it will snap when you break, you're done. You cannot do any more work on your project except uh, carving and sanding down. And bone dry clay, that's when we put it in the kiln. 
You guys all know your stages for wrapping your project. If you want it to stay in the same stage, wrap it airtight. If you want it to dry a little so you can go to the next stage, wrap it loosely. When you want it to dry completely, you tent it. Okay, um, so plastic is your first steps when you make your project. Uh, leather hard is more detailed work on the project. Chocolate hard are your final steps. Um, just like the sanding, carving, touching up, carving your name in the bottom, bone dry, turn it in. Ideas and inspirations for simple soft slab vessels. So in here is the sketchbook assignment, the rubric, and student examples. Okay, so here's the rubric. <clears throat> of course, your name goes on as always. We're looking for an accurate template. Uh, create a symmetrical template for the height and the top edge of your vessel. Cut clay perpendicular with a lacing needle. Rhythm and movement. The top edge should create a gentle curve or an undulating line. Edges should be smooth and round. Balance, design, and unity. The left and right should match. A focal point is created by the impressed design that secures the edges. And quality, of course, no cracks or dents. Um, no cracks at the seams, even thickness throughout, and you guys know how to fix cracks and dents so they're not visible. Okay, these are some samples of the project. This is the basic project we're doing. These little indents right here are um, they're decorative, but they also act like a staple. These overlapping pieces have been slipped and scored, and then a tool was pressed in to create a design right there. Uh, this one had, they used a line right here that they used to press in to secure the two pieces of clay. This one I think is beautifully done. Okay, these ones did not follow directions, and you can see the difference in those. Okay, resources, videos, and instructions. This is where I got all the information for this lesson. It's a little bit different than our exact lesson, but you can see right here. Uh, flatten the clay by hand. Press with your palm, not your fingers. Flip it often like we saw in the video by John the Potter. Rotate directions for flipping and rolling, and it should be between it's 11 o'clock, a quarter inch and three eighths of an inch thick. So in case you've forgotten your measurements, I wrote down like the ruler here, a quarter inch is like two eighths and three eighths right there. So a little bigger than a quarter inch. Reminder, don't let the clay touch the ruler. He did, we're not going to do that. Okay, uh, we're going to lay your template on the clay. Hold your lacing needle at a 90 degree angle. That's straight up and down vertical. Remove the excess clay because you're going to save it for the bottom. Don't ball it up. And ball up any excess clay other than what you use for the bottom. Um, this is a difference in ours. I drew a little red line. Our template is going to be this shape right here, not a rectangle. So you start out with a rectangle template, piece of paper that you fold in half, and you cut it like a hill, and that's how you get that shape. Armature. Um, wrap a cylinder with a layer of paper. You can use a soda can or um, whatever else, a water bottle, soup can. Do not tape the cylinder or the paper to the cylinder because then you can't slide it off. Wrap your clay around the cylinder. Now he's textured the clay. We're not texturing it. We're leaving it smooth. In your advanced project, if you'd like to texture, you're welcome to do that. Okay, you stand your cylinder up, wrap the clay around, slip and score this part that overlaps right here. So you're going to use your comb and you're going to use your toothbrush on there. And then you're going to apply a little bit of gentle pressure. Okay, press the overlapping clay together with pressure. Use a tool to stamp or impress the design into the seam. 
This impression will act like a staple to secure the seam. The impressed design will create a focal point and should be attractive. So make something that's attractive right there. Remove the armature and alter the cylinder. So notice how he's pulling this out. If it was taped together, it would be stuck right there. But because it's not taped to the cylinder, it'll slide out. Uh, you can keep you have to keep rounded walls. If you fold to a direct point, it will cause cracks. But you can create an oval or a triangular or a square-ish type form if you want. Don't get it too skinny though because then it um, may tip over. He made his into a square-ish shape. And I'm saying that because he knows the corners are still round. Um, we're going to work on the base and the foot right here. Lightly trace your cylinder with <clears throat> onto a flat slab. Notice the slab is too big. That's good. Slip and score the inside that um, on that line and the bottom of your cylinder. So you can see where he slipped and scored right here. And he's slipping and scoring right there. Okay, trim the base. <coughs> excuse me, about a quarter, an eighth of an inch. Using the modeling tool, gently blend up so that it merges with your cylinder. Trim the foot with the lacing needle. So you can see he's trimming around here, getting it close. It's about a quarter inch, eighth of an inch bigger. And then he's going to blend that in and then cut a little beveled edge underneath so that it creates a shadow. That makes it look like a foot. Smooth the foot and the lip with a damp sponge to make it look refined and finished. Remember, our Simple Soft slab is slightly different from the Amico. Um, on this one, the foot is cut totally away and it just angles underneath the pot. That is fine as well. You can do either one. You can make it so it leaves a little ridge around there, a little rim like a foot, or you can just angle it under. Okay, he's showing an option here. This is not mandatory. But he's making some little handles. Uh, he makes two of them. They're just from the little coil here, bent in half, and he's blending them onto the sides. Remember the three S's, uh, score, slip, and smooth. All right, that was it for the first project. Now your second project, you're good to do a more advanced version. So for the second one, uh, same identification submission. Your form, your uh, it's your choice, but it must be aesthetically pleasing, which means beautiful and balanced and not designed by Mr. Gravity. Uh, design and construction must be a soft slab construction that reflects and builds on knowledge and skills from the first soft slab vessel. Creativity and innovation create a unique form with unique additive, subtractive, and surface designs. Research ideas for inspiration. Your project must be more complex than the first soft slabs. And again, here we're looking for develops complex solutions to visual problems. Okay, we're going to do research like we did before. Divide a sketchbook page into quarters. Uh, research sketch, one has to be from the PowerPoint. Your second one can be from the PowerPoint, or if you can't find two that you like on my PowerPoint, you can search the internet. The third one is your search from the internet. And the fourth one, again, show me your ideas. Put them all together into a final design. Draw little arrows that show me what it is that inspired you for this original idea. Okay, so these slabs, um, they used a mold to create the design on here. Notice this interesting cut on here and the little button kind of closing that off. Again, a wonderful mold that they used there and they made these little buttons to press in. Um, that's another way of securing instead of a stamp. And they made this undulating edge I've talked about that on the last project. If you make the clay, if you bend it straight out, then you press up here and here, that will create the undulating line. Do not pinch this edge. It comes from going straight out and then being pressed up. 
These are pieces of lace that the clay was wrapped or rolled on. You roll the slab first and then you press the texture onto it. This one's kind of fun. They used a mold of big leaf. You can actually pick one of those big leaves like from sea grapes and press it into your clay. And then they just wrapped it up in a very organic fashion. This is a little more creative. You can see the zigzag going on there. Um, this has several layers on it. These are big long slabs that are brought together. I'm not as fond of how they finish those off. I think they could have made a little more interesting vertical edge on there. This is actually a potter's wheel pot that's been molded in. So those of you that have been working on the potter's wheel, if you want to do this type of project with the potter's wheel, you can, where you're manipulating the clay in a soft stage. These are also soft slabs that are put together um, by lining them up inside of a bowl. If you did it on the outside when the clay shrinks, it would crack, so you have to put it on the inside. This one again, um, you put it on the inside of the bowl and these pieces stand straight up and then you fold them down. It's very tricky to get this order correct. Again, another leaf and if you drape it into a bowl you can get this wonderful undulating line. Undulating line is this where it waves up and down, gets fat and thin. This is a wall piece. Um, Again, manipulating a soft slab, and this is a really cool sculpture, abstract, um, difficulty level very high on that. This is another project I used to do with the students. We did a little cylinder um, with a lid, and this cut edge right here, which looks like frosting dripping, is um, what locks the lid into place. Those little locks hold it in place so it doesn't slide off. These are also drapings where the clay was pressed into a bowl this way. These are four slabs here and then four underneath all placed into a bowl and a little mold of the sun was pressed into the center there. This was a big flat piece like a big pizza and then draped into a really tiny bowl so that we had to push up on the edges to make it fit in and to get this cool edge on here that's pinched so it's ripped so it doesn't have um, like a mechanical edge to it and these are other soft slabs. These are two sided where you just make a front and a back and you put them together. You see these two are identical. Um, this one's a little different. This is a little owl inspired piece so the back is lower and the front looks like the front of the owl. Reminders, uh, the three S's, slip score smooth, coils at seams, additive subtractive and impression, and decorative options. So once again, if you see a seam that's big, make sure to put a coil in it. Their coil is huge. I'm telling you only use one the size of spaghetti. Dents, make sure you add pea-sized pieces of clay to dents. Textures are a wonderful way to um, make your project more complex. These are made with the back end of paintbrush and pencils. This is uh, Scraffito where you're scraping away and carving in. Some of these are additive. You guys already know how we did that. We measured off and um, created a repeating design. Glaze is our glass coating that's non-porous. Um, one of these projects we will be glazing. And if you do glaze, you got to remember to wipe the bottom, otherwise it will fuse to the kiln shelf and be removed with a hammer. Other options that we use in the class you should be familiar with. We have used um, the India ink which is on here. I do have paint markers for some fine details. We've used acrylic paint and this is underglaze and Maholica glaze. I have both of those and if you're curious about those we can talk about them on an individual basis. Vocabulary is right here. I'm going to give you a handout to go with that.
All right, so a lot of this is review. I just want to make sure you know it well, and we'll start the project after the sketchbook assignments. All right.